Are you ready to embark on a journey to a brand new world? Scientists have just discovered a planet unlike any other in our solar system, and it's waiting for us to explore its mysteries. Get ready for the adventure of a lifetime as we discover the secrets of this incredible new world. The announcement of the newly discovered planet on the outskirts of our planetary system came from NASA not too long ago. They have given it the moniker Kepler-22, just after the telescope was utilized to determine its existence. Kepler-22 is the only planet that NASA believes may have the potential to support life, and it is also the one that looks the most similar to Earth among those that the observatory has discovered. On the planet Kepler-22, might there be extraterrestrial beings? Do they have more technologically advanced civilizations than we do? Imagine all the possible outcomes. Perhaps they have a system in which the people's concerns are prioritized over those of the officials seeking re-election. They may have term restrictions for lawmakers, after which they would have to step down. There is a wide range of potential outcomes. In this video, we will discuss the new Kepler-22 planet. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're ready to dive into the vast unknown with me as we investigate the most recent discoveries in space and planets. Let's get started. The Kepler Space Telescope discovered the very first extrasolar planet, also known as an exoplanet, inside the habitable zone of its host star. It is believed to be a productive location, not too warm so the water won't dissipate, yet not too chilly so that it won't freeze. This perfect spot is sometimes referred to as the Goldilocks zone. In addition, a researcher on the Kepler team hypothesized that the planet, which is more than twice the size of Earth, could not support life on its crust. Instead, it might have a climate more analogous to Neptune, with a rocky core and a vast ocean. Kepler-22's atmosphere and its composition on the occasion of Kepler-22's detection, numerous news outlets reported the planet's existence as if it were a second Earth orbiting a faraway star. That is only valid in the most fundamental sense when weighed against the vast number of places found throughout the galaxy. If we were given the opportunity to travel there, Kepler would appear to us as entirely foreign, irrespective of the fact that it shares many characteristics with Earth. It goes around a star that is very similar to our Sun. It is a yellow dwarf, but slightly more diminutive, older, and considerably less bright. Because of its size and brilliance, it doesn't produce nearly the amount of heat that humans are used to. Kepler-22 orbits somewhat nearer to its parent star than Earth is to it, which helps to keep matters more or less on a level playing field. However, proximity to a star does not represent the only criterion determining whether a planet can support human habitation. It is essential to have a solid understanding of the atmosphere surrounding a planet, as this factor has as much of an effect on the mean temperature if not more. It is only necessary to look further than our immediate planetary neighbors to find proof of this. If proximity to the Sun were the only factor to take into account, we would anticipate that Mercury would be the hottest planet. However, this is not the case. It is solely due to the stifling environment that a typical day on Venus is hotter than even the warmest locations on Mercury, even though Venus is located at a significant distance from the Sun. Because Kepler was not designed to analyze the atmosphere's composition, we must rely on conjecture and expert predictions. However, the consensus is that Kepler has the temperature of a pleasant spring, with temperatures hovering around 73 degrees Fahrenheit. It is also important to note that some scenarios envision Kepler turning on its axis, with every pole pointing towards the Sun halfway through its 290-day orbital period. This could further assist Kepler's temperate environment as the stellar energy gradually becomes more balanced over time. Even though a tilt of this kind isn't uncommon, our Neptune rotates in this manner, and there is no proof to show that 22 tilts in either direction. If we suppose that the atmosphere is comparable to Earth's, then we are dealing with a planet with air that can be breathed in weather that only requires a light jacket. It seems to be a dream. It looks like a vast improvement over the world described to us in Raised by Wolves, at least unless we consider the world's characteristics as a whole. Previously existing civilization while exploring one of the desert zones of Kepler-22, the Mithraic came across a massive stone dodecahedron, which led them to believe that the planet had been colonized at some point in the past. The Mithraic also came across a human-like entity that was attired in scraps. This entity could generate a primitive map of the territory encompassing the desert and the atheist population, and it owned steel tokens decorated with signs and encrypted with information that a mobile might interpret. The Mithraic were able to decipher the information on these tokens. In addition, the ruins of an old android were the focal point of some rituals carried out by other humanoids. Father concluded that people had earlier inhabited Kepler-22 a very long time ago after observing the form of a human that mother had murdered and conducting a biochemical study of a humanoid Neanderthal head that was in its custody. 
These humans had degenerated into more basic forms, such as the hominids and the more prevalent wild species, for reasons that are not fully understood. It is unknown whether the humans that live on Kepler-22 evolved on Earth and then traveled to Kepler-22 in prehistoric days, whether they formed on Kepler-22 and then colonized Earth, or whether they started anywhere else. The habitable region we have no idea at this point. At the moment, we do not have a very good notion of the truly essential parameters for life, but it is plausible to argue that there should be liquid upon that planet's surface. This would be a suitable starting point. This implies that the planet is composed of solid rock as opposed to a gaseous substance, as the latter wouldn't allow for the existence of a layer on the planet. The term habitable zone refers to various distances from a star within which an Earth-like planetary might be capable of having water on its ground. The star's warmth and luminosity determine the extent of this range. In essence, it refers to the distance from the star that can be traveled before the temperature becomes intolerable on either end. Kepler-22 is located within the habitable zone of its star. According to the calculations done by the Kepler crew, the climate should be around 22 degrees Celsius, which is, so the thinking goes, ideal for the existence of liquid water. However, the accuracy of this estimation is highly dependent on the type of atmosphere that the planet possesses. The average temperature on Earth would be minus 20 degrees Celsius if it did not have ozone. Still, the greenhouse gases cause it to be warmer than that by retaining some energy. The exact air temperature of 22 degrees is currently unclear. The temperature of 22 degrees is only a forecast based on the belief in a gentle greenhouse effect similar to that of Earth. Think that Venus, which has a dense atmosphere that preserves the surface temperature at a searing 470 degrees Celsius, would have a range of roughly minus 40 degrees C if it didn't have that atmosphere. This can give you an idea of the extent to which air could impact the climate. Therefore, we can't really judge whether or not the atmosphere of Earth-22 is conducive to supporting life until we learn more about it. Observations for the near future Kepler continues to remain functional today, but the observatory is running well beyond its expected lifespan because it is currently unable to mark in a specific direction owing to mechanical failings. As a result, the observatory inspects different regions of the sky rather than focusing on a single path. Since Kepler-22, it has discovered a large number of additional worlds with the potential to support life. Even though the vast distance between these civilizations makes it challenging to do follow-up research, additional investigation is still conceivable with the help of ground-based observatories or future space telescopes. The James Webb Space Telescope and the European Extremely Large Telescope, also known as EL, are both examples of possible observatories that could investigate Kepler-22. The first beam for the ELT, which refers to the time when the telescope will begin its initial round of testing, is scheduled for 2024. So, what did we discover? Kepler-22 provides us with one of the most well-known instances of an exoplanet that possesses the possibility of being habitable by life. Even though we have yet to discover evidence of biological processes in this far-off star cluster, some commonalities between Kepler-22's structure and that of our celestial bodies encourage us to think that Kepler-22 may be the ideal planet for hosting life. Furthermore, the fact that Kepler-22 is located in the habitable region of its host system, in addition to its star being identical to our own sun, lends credence to the hypothesis that liquid water may be present on the surface of the planet. At this moment, all we can do is keep our fingers crossed that future scientific breakthroughs will make it possible for us to conduct more in-depth research on the planet, ultimately leading to the discovery of intelligent alien life in the Kepler-22 star cluster. Thanks for tuning in to Star Burst. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new about our incredible universe. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting content and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode.